Good morning, Keith. Good morning, Sarah, and good morning, Tristan. And uh, is Angela there too? Yeah, this is me, Keith. How are you? Um, right. Good, our thank you. Our condolences to you. I know just thank how you. difficult a time this is for you and the band. Do you remember the first you. time you met Judith? Yes, I remember it really clearly because uh, it was uh, on a Monday night uh, in December. I believe it was December the 3rd and in 1962. And uh, she had uh, been uh, talked into coming to the Treble Clef Coffee Lounge where Bruce and Ethel and I were performing every Monday night. And um, Bruce had picked her up at her house in Baldwin and uh, Ethel and I were already at the Treble Clef. And uh, the, uh, she walked in and uh, Ethel said, uh, Keith, this is Judith. Judith, this is Keith. And she sat down and and we started singing. It was as, uh, it was as brief and uh, glorious as that. And, uh, and it didn't stop for 60 years. Wow. Judith is being described yeah. as a national treasure and having the voice of an angel. But what was it about her voice that was just so unique, do you think? Well, it was the purity of her voice. Uh, it was certainly a unique voice. And uh, she had the ability to, uh, uh, to sing tenderly. She had the, the ability to sing uh, uh, loud, you know, uh, we, uh, Athel and Bruce and I are pretty loud singers and for, for her to be able to match that volume was really quite a challenge, but she did it magnificently and, uh, and so uh, that covered all the, all the bases and uh, tremendously uh, a powerful voice when it needed to be and a, a wonderfully tender voice when it needed to be. Keith, I know you had one final conversation with Judith just before she passed on Friday. I, I can't yes. imagine how emotional that must have been. Can, can you share with us a little of, of what you said? Yes, yes indeed. Uh, it was emotional, as you say. Uh, one of the most emotional conversations I've ever had. But uh, we uh, told each other that we loved each other and uh, we reminisced over happy times that we've had over the 60 years. And uh, it, was, uh, it, it was one of those conversations where uh, the, the words meant everything, absolutely meant everything to cover the time that we had spent together. But that was, that was the, the happiest uh, but emotional phone call that I've had because I was able to, to speak with her uh, just as, as it turned out only a matter of a couple of hours before she died. Wow. Uh, Keith, this, this year marks 60 years since the Seekers first performed together. Um, will you and the band be celebrating and remembering Judith in any special way? Well, uh, we've, we've already started having our private wakes, uh, as it turns out, because uh, we, I think we all realise that uh, there's huge sadness. People feel uh, incredible sadness about about Judith, uh, Judith passing, but but now, from now on, I think it's time to uh, celebrate her her uh, gift to uh, to the music world and her gift to the to the general world, and uh, and and be happy and uh, and celebrate celebrate her life and uh, what she brought to brought to the world, and that'll never be forgotten. Uh, we uh, we're taking it one step at a time. We can't really say uh, anything about that, but I, I I doubt it. I think I think we'll we'll uh, we'll just remember that glorious voice and uh, and not intrude into uh, in, into that aspect of uh, of uh, gift uh, to the world. Uh, as I say, it's it's early days, so we'll we'll wait and see how uh, how things uh, transpire over the next uh, little while. Those closest to Judith Durham, lead singer of The Seekers, have come out to share memories of her life. Keith, one of the founding members of The Seekers, spent much of the 60s making music and touring with Durham as the front woman of the band. The musicians shared many surreal moments, like knocking the Beatles off the number one spot in the UK charts and performing to screaming crowds. By reflecting on Durham's life after her death, aged 79, Keith most remembers her advocacy work. After Durham's husband, Ron Edgeworth, died from motor neuron disease in 1994, she worked tirelessly to raise money and awareness to fight the degenerative disease. It made quite a difference to the awareness of that issue and to see her unfailingly help to raise funds that was quite remarkable in her generosity of spirit, Keith told ABC Radio Melbourne. 
He said their strong connections helped them deal with the pressures of fame as the band became increasingly successful throughout the 1960s. He felt that we were sharing the whole ride together, he said. During the four years, they recorded their songs often, reached number one on the UK charts, and they managed to crack the US market with Go Giggle, Rest in Pop Queen.